Let's get into the word this morning. I believe that God has something to say. We're going to go back to Matthew. If you joined us this past Thursday for Midweek Empowerment, we were in Matthew, uh, same chapter, a different approach. There's a lot of practicality that uh, we gain from Matthew's gospel in chapter six. And I pray that what we pull out today is something that will encourage you and push you ahead. So Matthew six, let's get into this word again. Hello to everybody, both all nations VA and all of our guests. We're so excited that you are with us this morning. Matthew 6, two verses, verses 5 and 6, Matthew 6, verses 5 and 6. It says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, this is verse 6, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. This morning, just for a few moments, I say a few moments, but just hang in with me uh, as long as you can. I want to talk to you all from this thought and perspective. Stay in the closet. It's going to make sense in a little while. Stay in the closet. Come on, type that in the chat. Stay in in the closet. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your principles. Thank you for revelation knowledge. Let it flow mightily now. Touch our hearts and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, anyone who knows me, you know, uh, if you've known me for any period of time, I'm a church boy. I grew up in the church. Uh, I am uh, church cultured. Uh, church has really shaped a lot of my perspective about life. I grew up in Freedom Church of God in Christ in Norfolk, Virginia. North Virginia, 2966 Argonne Avenue. You know, back in the day, they would say in the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. There's a picture coming up now to show you the church I, I, I grew up in. Uh, this is where I was saved, where I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, where I re really began to establish the foundation of my relationship with God. My grandfather, the late Francis Askew, was the pastor. Uh, my uncle was the minister of music. Uh, my aunts and uh, my mother mother were in the choir, my sister and I were in the Sunshine Band. It was what many people would call a family church. Some of y'all know about those family churches on a good, good Sunday. And I'm talking about like Pentecost Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. We would see a strong 75 people. I mean, it had to be a really good Sunday or a major event. But on average, we'll have maybe about 50 to 60 people on a Sunday meeting collectively to worship God. And um, everybody knew everybody. Y'all know how family churches go. Everybody knows everybody. We may have different last names, but we, we consider ourselves one big family. And one thing that I loved about growing up in church during the 90s, and particularly growing up in Freedom Church of God in Christ, is the appreciation that we had for hymns. Now, I, now, I know that sounds foreign to some of the millennials, but we had a great appreciation for hymns. Uh, my grandfather, anyone who knows him, they know that that he loved singing hymns. And there was not one service that was held where a hymn was not sung. And as an adolescent, being very young, uh, I didn't know the depth of power that those songs carried back then. I didn't really know, I just knew we sung it every time. We had the uh, the, red, the Yes Lord Red hymn book. Y'all remember that? Especially if you grew up Kojic, had that Yes Lord Red hymn book. And um, I didn't really understand the songs we were singing in my adolescence, right? But as I grew into adulthood, many of those songs became the fuel that sustained my faith. Songs like Blessed Assurance. Come on. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. And my favorite part was this is my story. This is my, some of y'all singing it right now. This is my song. Praising my savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my savior all the day long. Now, my note was off there, but y'all get it. That, those, those are songs that kept us around those times. Such lyrics like that reassured us of the salvation we had through Jesus Christ and renewed our expectation of his return. Now, I know we've grown into a lot of different theological frameworks, but back around that time, we were just happy that we were saved, sanctified, baptized, filled with the precious Holy Ghost with the mind to run on, come on, to see what the end was going to be. We were happy just to 
be saved by the power of God, which reminds me of another song that my grandfather always sung, another hymn called Saved. He will boldly and triumphantly stand behind the mic. You know, my grandfather, anyone who knows him, he was very theatrical. He would stand behind that mic and saying, I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Come on, saved by his power divine. <laughs> I'm about to get happy. Saved to new, to, to, to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. He'll say, for I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And he'll keep going through that portion. My grandmother would get happy. The mothers would start running around the church and, and really begin to go into uproar, praising God because we were excited that we were saved. Those lyrics around that time, yes, they were good for listening, but they were even more helpful for lifestyle. We didn't just listen to these songs for a good feeling. We listened to these songs because they gave us language and perspective as it relates to our relationship with God and our response to who he is. They possess the power. And still today, if you pull out a hymn, they possess the power to give us what we need to push through our ups and our downs. They had power when we sung those songs. And one of my favorite hymns, which I believe is relevant to today's message is one that I'm hoping you will take the heart and I'm sure many of you all have heard it before the lyrics are profound and they offer something we can put into practice today it says what a friend <laughs> I got some of y'all now we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything glory to God to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless peace pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. It is this song. It's one of my favorite hymns that keeps me conscious of the necessity of prayer and communion with God. If, if you know me, you know, I've been uh, keeping in contact with what's going on in the world and in the community and in the body of Christ. And I have been truly blessed to see so many Christian leaders and followers of Christ use online platforms to gather people for prayer. I don't think I've logged on one day and not seen someone edifying the body of Christ through prayer and supplication. I believe it's necessary. Come on. It is necessary for the times that we are in and essential to the power of God being released in the earth for change. Prayer releases mando shaka, the power of God. The Bible tells us in James 5, 16, it says the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power. Come on. And produces wonderful results. Please know as followers of God who are in right relationship with him through Jesus Christ, we expect results every time we open up our mouths to pray. Come on. Every time I open up my mouth to pray, I am not just praying just to do it. I expect to see results. If I am praying for healing, I expect to see healing. If I am praying for protection, I expect to see protection. If I am praying for deliverance, I expect to see deliverance. Our prayers create the power to produce what the earth needs heaven to pour out. Let me say that again. My prayers, your prayers, our prayers create Create the power, Shantan, so cold, to produce what the earth needs heaven to pour out. Every time I pray, I am tapping into a different realm that is able to invade my present reality. This is why when Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray, he presents prayer as the way to invite heaven into earth. What an invitation, glory to God, to invite heaven into earth, the supernatural into the natural, the divine into humanity. It is the source of sustainment in a world that can easily run short in supply. I want to say that again. Prayer is the source of our sustainment in a world that can easily, we, we're saying that now, it can easily run short in supply. When there's a shortage of peace, we pray. When there's a shortage of resources, glory to God, we pray. When there's a shortage of cures, we pray. Prayer supplies us in every area where life has fallen. 
falling short. Glory to God. It supplies us when life is not answering us and responding to us the way we need it to. We tap into the place of prayer. And may I suggest to you, if you want to see God turn things around for our world, for our communities, for our church, glory to God, for our families and for us as individuals, then we must commit our lives to prayer and more so to the closet. Glory to God. Yes, not just corporately though, but individually, the closet not being indicative of our clothing, but being the place where we keep our connection to God. The closet keeps us connected. Please type that. That's a good point. The closet, oh, glory to God, it keeps us connected. The Lord told me when I was in prayer this week, he says, son, I'm beckoning my sons and daughters to use this time of isolation to invoke intimacy through prayer. Glory to God. We have an opportunity opportunity to use our time of isolation to invoke intimacy through prayer. He said, Jeff, I'm closer than you can imagine. Just waiting for hearts to reach for me. Glory to God. I'm closer than what you can imagine. I'm just waiting for somebody to be bold enough and willing enough to get on their knees and pursue me. He said, my presence is enough. Glory to God. I know we're looking for a lot of things right now, but the Lord says, my presence is enough for those who seek me uh, will find safety daily. He said, I'm reprioritizing prayer lives. Uh, if there's anything the last few weeks uh, has caused us to do, uh, it's caused us to check how often we pray. Uh, we, are, uh, we are having uh, our prayer lives uh, reprioritized. Uh, God says, I'm reviving passion uh, and I'm restoring fellowship. Um, he said, prayers will be more about people wanting me uh, and taking the time to check their hearts for me. Uh, and if there's anything hindering uh, genuine fellowship with with me, saith the Lord, I'm going to remove that thing so that I can ignite an unprecedented passion for my presence. God, watch this, y'all. He is recapturing the hearts of his sons and daughters, issuing restoration and revival that will be used to bring unbelievers to him. Because how can we draw people to connect with our God when we are disconnected? But I got news for you. If you get back on your knees, God's going to connect you and then your connection is going to lead to change. Our closet is about to become a place of intimacy and intent. Nothing else will matter. Glory to God. We can't do a lot of stuff right now anyway, so we might as well seek him. We might as well pour out our praise and seek him in places of intimacy because nothing will matter once we connect with God in these private moments. It is in his presence and his presence alone that we desire to see him move through times of prayer. Now when I say stay in the closet. I'm not suggesting just stay in there and don't come out and brush your teeth and wash your face and intermingle with your family. But I'm saying that we must make prayer a commitment and not a convenience. Hello, somebody. We must make prayer a commitment and not a convenience. We must be willing to find ourselves postured daily. Come on. Daily in the presence of the Lord with faith and fellowship. Watch this. Regardless of how we feel. Because convenience means I have to feel like doing it. But we're in a time now you've got to override your feelings and let your faith and fellowship be what pushes you further in relationship with God. This means watch this. Uh, prayer must become a priority. Now, prayer must be pure and prayer must be personal. Let me say that so that you can put it in the chat and write it down in your notes. Uh, prayer must become a priority. Prayer must be pure and prayer must be personal. Notice in the text when Jesus talks about prayer, he says when we pray, not if we pray. Hello, somebody. He says, when we pray, not if we pray. This means as believers, watch this. Prayer is not a suggestion. It's an expectation. Okay. Prayer is not a suggestion. It's an expectation. And anything Jesus expects us to do is something we must prioritize. We must prioritize prayer. Prayer must be prioritized. Type that in the chat. We must prioritize prayer. Why? Because anything Jesus expects us to do is something that we must prioritize. When we prioritize prayer, we in essence prioritize God.
Y'all see that? When I prioritize prayer, in essence, I prioritize God because prayer is the spiritual discipline we use to communicate with him. If you're a morning person, then you must schedule time to meet with him in the morning. Psalm 63, the psalmist says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. I'm not just going into prayer just to say I did it, to post it on my social media platform, to say I've prayed. No, I'm going to seek the face of God. Why? My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land. I think our land right now is dry and thirsty and they just don't need earthly answers. They need heavenly intervention. Why? Because we need some water to see that power and water being the refreshing power of the Holy Ghost. To see that power and that glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, y'all, we've seen God move in our corporate gatherings, but sometimes you got to get in your closet and say, God, just like you moved in the sanctuary, move in this secret place. Glory to God. Now, he's the God that moves in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And the God that meets him in the secret place. And what better way to prioritize God than in the mornings, seeking him right when you wake up, seeking his face, asking him, God, what are you doing today? Glory to God. What are you saying today? I know what's in the news. I know what's around me. But what are you saying? I'll seek you in the morning to know what you're doing in my life. Now you may say, I'm not a morning person. That's all right. If you're a night hawk, then you've got to schedule time with God at night. And we know scripture tells us, Paul and Silas, they are evidence that God hears us in the middle of the night and answers. Aren't y'all glad that God, he's like State Farm. You can call anytime and he'll be available to answer your request and answer your needs and conversate with you and spend time with you. I don't think God is worried about when we pray but he does expect us to pray. And I think many of us need to find time to pray and prioritize him even throughout the day. We should make two or three prayer breaks. Prayer breaks. Prayer breaks. Type that prayer breaks. What is that? 10 to 15 minutes of reflection on the goodness of God. Some of us ain't got nowhere to go. So we can make this time for him about 10 to 15 minutes of reminding ourselves of his promises, of reflecting on his goodness of releasing worship and adoration I'll just stop and say God when I think of the goodness of Jesus you gotta take time throughout your home switch rooms I'm gonna spend 15 minutes in here I'm gonna spend 15 minutes in my kitchen I'm gonna spend 15 minutes in my garage find somewhere and give him a prayer break why? it shows that you prioritize time with him and when we prioritize time with God in prayer, he draws near to us. He privileges us with his presence by drawing near to us. And it is truly him that we want. This is why prayer must be pure as it relates to our motives. Ah, we're not just going to prayer just to get something from him. We're going to prayer to give something to him. The priority of prayer should be driven by the desire to be in the presence of God. So I'm going to give my heart, my mind, my will, my emotions, because I want his presence. Jesus teaches us that prayer is about getting away to a secluded place to be with the Father. Denote intimacy there. Father, not just God, but Father. It denotes intimacy. There are so many people at asking God for answers right now, but it is absent of or lacking in pure affection for him. He's not just God, he's our father. Now, some of you have children, you know you'll do anything for your children, but it's good when they're just not looking for what you can do with your hand, but rather they wanna be in your presence so they'll know how your heart feels towards them. Prayer, yes, it is a place where we can make our requests known to God. It is also, however, a place where we can strengthen our relationship with him, where the reason we want to be with him is simply because we want him. One of my favorite scriptures I said all of the time, Psalm 27, it says, uh, David says, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most uh, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections uh, and meditating in his temple. That's what prayer does. It allows me to delight in the Lord's perfection and meditate in his temple. Why? Because when our heart and our desire for God becomes greater than our need for what's in his hand, I believe we'll begin to see him manifest in ways we would not have imagined. When we begin to look at prayer as an opportunity, opportunity to have intimacy with God and less of an obligation to meet religious standards, we'll begin to see growth in our personal walk with him that we've never known before. Why? Our priority 
baptized in. It's coming for a pure, from a pure place. And the reason I believe Jesus admonishes us to go away by ourselves, shut the door behind us, and pray to our Father in secret with pure motives is because it then begins to personalize the experience. I am prioritizing prayer from a pure place and now it personalizes the experience. If this quarantine period has taught me anything, it has taught me the importance of knowing God for myself. Hello, somebody, knowing God for myself. Yes, the corporate gathering, both in person and online, is necessary, but it's good to know that I can prioritize him from a pure place and begin to make my prayer life with him personal. If there were ever a time where closets were necessary, now is that time. If there was ever a time where seclusion and solitude was necessary, now is that time. It's time for us to prioritize prayer yeah, we can social distance from everybody, but I'm not trying to distance myself from God. I want to draw near to him as he draws near to me. And the way I do that is by finding a closet, shutting out distractions, shutting off my phone, closing down my computer and saying, Father, I need you. God, I need you. I need your presence. I need your glory. I need your power. I need your word. Back in the day, Terrian services. You better get in your closet and have you a whole Terrian service. God, I stretch my heart to do to you. God, I stretch my mind to you. Change me, mold me, make me yours. So God, when I come out of this isolation, I have more power. I have more perspective. I have more strength to tell people there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath that flow. Lose all guilty stain. Why? Because I was reminded of how faithful, how awesome, and how powerful God was in my personal time with him. We need to get back in the closet. Hey, Kanamando Saya. We need to get back in the place where it's just us and God. Do we stop corporate gatherings? No, we need each other like never before now. But we don't forsake or just, or, or just make it seem like the corporate gathering is all we need. We don't forsake our private time just to be corporate. We do corporate and we do personal. Why? Because it's in the closet where we gain what we need from God. We must prioritize prayer. It must come from a pure place. It has to be pure and we must personalize it. Develop your own relationship with God in the closet and stay there, y'all. Because we're coming out of this. This too shall pass. But I don't want us to be, become so close to God just because we're in a time of affliction and famine. And then as soon as it's over, it's life back to normal. No, God has positioned all of us to come into a place of relationship that will continue even when the dust has cleared. Is there anybody here now on this chat that says, Pastor Jeff, I hear you. Man, I've forsaken my closet. I've been tuning in hearing what God is saying to everybody else. But this week, I'm going to find a closet. I'm going to prioritize prayer. It's from a pure place. I'm not just going in to, to get God to do stuff for me. I really want to know him. And because of that, I'm going to personalize my experience. Prayer is most powerful. That's where you're going to see God move, not just corporately, but for you as well. There's a personal revival that's going on in our homes where God is bringing us closer and closer to him that he may get the glory out of our lives. I'm praying this week, man. And we're going to pray now that God will begin to stir up in us a desire to seek him in the closet. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go find a closet, but it's more so an intimate place, a place where you can get away from everybody. If you're a parent, nap time, let me go somewhere and seek the face of God. I want him to know that I want him more than anything else. And that's my prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we, we stretch our hearts to you this morning. God, we've prayed corporately, God. And God, this is not to say that we're not praying privately, but I'm asking that you would stir something in us to begin to seek you privately, God prioritizing you, praying from a pure place, personalizing our experience. I believe it's then, God, that we begin to see your power move like we've never seen it before. I'm asking now that you will begin to stir up in the hearts of your people a desire to pray, to seek your face, to turn, God, from anything that pulls us from a place of prayer so that, God, our time in the closet will invoke intimacy that we've never known. Pour out your spirit. Your word declares, God, in the last days, you'll pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And we're asking now that you begin to do that as we seek you in our private times of prayer. We honor you and glorify you because we know, God, if we find ourselves in the closet, 
we'll find ourselves in your presence. And if we find ourselves in your presence, we have everything we need. In Jesus' name, we honor and thank you for the privilege to pray. It is so.